Perhaps one of the things I think is so cool about long exposure photography is the fact that you're able to create something that it doesn't exist in reality. You'll never be able to see the effect that long exposures has on say moving water or moving clouds in the sky with your naked eye. And you don't have to rely on any kind of post-processing wizardry to create this effect. It's all done in camera, which I think is just super, super cool. Now a common misconception is that you have to have a bunch of additional gear for long exposure photography and it's simply just not the case. More than likely you have the majority of the items you need to get started. So outside of the obvious things like a camera and a lens, you want to have a good sturdy tripod, you want to use a remote shutter release or a self timer on your camera, a two or maybe a 10 second self timer. You ultimately just want to get away from having to actually press the shutter button to start your exposure because that always introduces a little bit of camera shake. And then you want to have a set of filters. Now I've been using Nissi's V4 filter system for probably over two years now. And not only did Nissi send me over their new V6 filter system to test out, they also decided to sponsor this week's video. So a big thanks to Nissi. Your support for the channel is greatly appreciated. Now there's really three main categories or three types of filters out there. You have your circular polarizers, which is great at increasing the vibrancy of certain colors in your scene. It's great at uh, removing harsh reflections, and it's good at cutting through haze in an atmosphere. Then you have your solid ND or solid neutral density filters, which is great for long exposure photography. Now these are kind of like sunglasses for your camera. They come in generally like three stop ND filters or 10 stop ND filters. And when you use one, let's say you're using a 10 stop ND filter, that's gonna stop 10 stops of light from entering your camera. And if you use a three stop ND filter, that's gonna stop three stops of light from entering your camera. Now, if you're wanting to balance exposure, that's when you want to use a graduated neutral density filter, which there's different types. I have a, a three-stop soft edge graduated filter, and then I also have a three-stop hard edge graduated filter. And it's great for situations where the sky is much brighter than the foreground, and this helps you balance it out. And the filter looks just like a solid ND filter, ex except it's dark at the top, and it fades to clear at the bottom. And we'll get into more specifics related to that here in a second. Now, before you start adding filters to the end of your lens, there's a couple things you want to do first. First, of course, you want to pick your composition and you want to dial in whatever settings that you want to use. So I always use an ISO as low as I can go, especially for long exposure photography. So I'm going to use ISO 50. And then you want to pick whatever aperture is appropriate for the scene you're trying to photograph. So in this situation, I'll probably use F8 or maybe F11. And once you have that information determined, I always switch my camera into aperture priority mode because I want to use my camera's light meter to tell me exactly what it thinks is a reasonable shutter speed given the aperture and the ISO level I selected. So let's say that if my camera's saying, Mark, if you're going to use F11 and ISO 50, given the amount of light that you have right now, your shutter speed will be one one thousandth of a second. And once I know that information, Nissi's got a pretty handy app. It's like a shutter speed calculator that'll help you determine what the shutter speed should be given whatever filter you want to use. So if I select the normal shutter speed, my camera says one one thousandth of a second. And let's say I want to use a three stop ND filter. My, my shutter speed with that filter would be one one hundred and twenty fifth of a second. Now it's not exact, but it just gives you a good starting point. And you can go ahead and start there, and then you can kind of make a couple adjustments north or south of that number once you've taken a couple exposures. Now once you have all of that information ready to go and dialed in, you then want to go ahead and lock your focus. Because as soon as you drop a filter in, you're going to have a very difficult time getting your camera to focus on anything. So figure out your focus point and switch your lens into manual mode to go ahead and lock that in. Once that's locked in, you can switch your camera into manual mode as well because you want to be able to have control of your ISO, your aperture, and your shutter speed. And now you can go ahead and dial in that specific shutter speed based off of the filter that you're going to use. Now, most filter systems will come with adapter rings to fit specific uh, thread sizes of lenses. I'm using my uh, Sony 16 to 35 G Master lens, which has an 82 millimeter thread size. So I'm going to be using Nissi's 82 millimeter uh, adapter ring. And you just basically just screw it right on. And this is what the actual filter holder will attach to. And it screws on very simple. I think maybe one, two, three or four rotations, but it's pretty simple and it's on there pretty snug. And then once you have the adapter ring in place, if you want to go ahead and add the circular polarizer, you can just screw it right in to the front opening of the adapter ring, like so. And then to actually rotate it, there's these little wheels on the front right here to adjust the uh, amount of polarization that you want to apply to your image, just based off of the amount of light that you happen to be working with. And this is the, uh, the filter holder for, that Nissi uses. It holds uh, three specific square filters in the front, but it's real simple to use. You basically just uh, pull this little uh, 
pin back to lock it in and you just slide it right on and it locks. And something that's new about the V6 system is my V4 system, it would rotate like this all the time and sometimes it would move while you're using it. But it actually has this little lock here that you can spin around just to kind of lock it in place, which is a pretty nice feature. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out a 10 stop solid ND filter because it's very bright outside. And, uh, and this is what the filter looks like. It's got a nice kind of foam gaskets on the, uh, the back side, just to create a nice solid seal against the actual filter holder itself because the last thing you want is any kind of a light leakage to get in between the filter holder and the actual ND itself. Now you just want to add the ND filter to the very first slot of the filter system, the slot that is closest to the lens, and then just slide it in to where it's covering the entire lens opening. And now that we have all of our filters in place, now we can start to experiment with different shutter speeds. So maybe increasing it a little bit above our base shutter speed or maybe decrease it some just until we get the desired effect that we're actually looking for. So if we wanted to try and balance the exposure of this very bright scene, we would use a graduated neutral density filter. This is the three stop soft graduated neutral density filter. And at the very top here is where there's three stops of light. And then at the very bottom, it's completely clear. And in the graduation zone between the two is very gradual. I also have a hard edge graduated filter where the actual graduation zone is much more abrupt. But these slide into the filter system just like any other filter does, just like the solid NDs. You just slide it right down into the front and then you line it up with the horizon as close as you can. Now this is a really cool way to see this. As I drop the filter down, you'll be able to see, I'm gonna put it down really far just so you can easily see the darkening effect of the actual sky. And as I move this up and down, you can really see the difference. Now this is a three stop hard edge graduated neutral density filter. And as you can see, the transition zone is much more abrupt than as compared to the soft edge graduated filter. But they're both the same in that they start at the top with three stops of light and then fade to the bottom where there is no light stoppage at all. It's completely clear. But the only real difference is the fact of how quickly it fades or how quickly that uh, transition zone occurs. It's much more abrupt than compared to the actual uh, soft graduated filter. So as you can see, that transition zone is much quicker. But the idea here is you just drop it down to the horizon line to a point to where it looks very realistic. I have definitely been out here far too long and I definitely put on far too little sunscreen. My face is pretty cooked right about now, but I find this type of photography to be highly addictive. Any kind of long exposure photography near the coast because I'm always trying to time it to where the waves are receding and you get those nice leading lines that kind of draw the viewer's eye into the composition. And every time I get an image I like, I think the very next image is gonna be better. The next wave will be better. So I'm constantly trying to best the previous image. And before you know it, two hours have gone by, 100 images have gone by, you got third degree burns all over your face, but it, nevertheless, still fun. Very straightforward composition now. Put the growing dead center of my frame just going for a very minimalistic, kind of long exposure type of an image. I wish there was definitely some clouds in the sky right now, and unfortunately high tide occurred right at midday, so we definitely aren't gonna get any color. Not that we would have anyway, because there's not a cloud out there regardless, but definitely not optimal photography conditions, but. Nevertheless, a day at the beach is better than, uh, I guess, a day anywhere else. So I'm putting in the uh, soft grad, three stop soft grad right now. I changed my composition up a little bit to where I'm actually coming in, looking at the growings from the side now with the sun behind me. I'm just trying to get a little bit of color in the sky. Just, you know, e even if it's just blue, that's fine. It's just better than that kind of washed out white look. So I'm putting in this soft grad. Hopefully that'll help a little bit, but um, Nevertheless, these are pretty harsh conditions to be shooting in. I'm just uh, thinking this might increase my odds a, a little bit. So I took off the soft edge grad and I'm putting on this hard edge grad because we're at the beach and this is the perfect scenario for it. You know, there's no trees, there's no mountains breaking the horizon line. So a nice hard edge defined graduation is perfect for that scenario. So. I'm hoping this will kind of darken down that sky just a little bit, just to try and get a little bit of color, a little bit of mood in the image. Now the difficult part about using a hard edge graduated filter is getting it lined up on the horizon perfectly. If you go down too far, it looks unnatural. If you don't go down far enough, then you're not using the full potential of the filter. So just getting it lined up takes a, a little bit of 
back and forth, but you'll get there. But it's definitely holding back the, the brightness of the sky, so that's good. I think that looks good right about there. Let's take a couple quick exposures just to see. Yeah. Well, I think the conditions are pretty much downhill from here. Not that they were ever really that good, but now that the tide's going back out, it won't be long before there's no water at all, even touching these groins, which makes it impossible to pull off this shot then. But I'm gonna pack everything up here. I'm gonna head back to the house. I'll load all the photos onto the computer. I'm pretty interested to see exactly how they all turned out. I generally don't shoot long exposures in excess of like 20, 25 seconds, but I did see a couple that were pretty interesting to me, albeit it's hard to see on the back of the camera because it's so bright outside, but there's a couple I'm pretty interested in seeing. So I'm gonna head back to the house and I'll pick this up there. To say that was less than ideal conditions might be the understatement of the year. I suppose it was okay though for a video about using uh, filters and harsh lighting conditions, but nevertheless, I was at that beach in, uh, the, during the morning hours for sunrise, and I did get some decent color in the sky, some decent light, and that's where I was first able to test out the, uh, the soft edge graduated filter and the hard edge graduated filter. And I also have some fully edited photos from the images taken with the uh, solid neutral density filters, the, uh, the three stop, the six stop, and the 10 stop. Nothing fantastic, but I do think it's a good representation of varying shutter speeds and its effect on uh, anything that's moving. Now, some things that I noticed between the, the V6 filter system versus the V5 filter system, of course, the, uh, the V6 system has that nice uh, locking mechanism right here, which I know I mentioned in the video. That is a very nice feature. The, uh, the filters are much easier to slide in and out. That was one of my biggest uh, struggles with the V5 system is I found the filters to be a little bit tough to kind of slide in place. But with the V6 system, they, they really just go in like butter and the, the, the filter system holds them in tight. I was never concerned about the filters ever falling out or anything like that, so that's definitely good. And then I didn't notice this at first, but the V6 system, the side of the filter holder is uh, on an angle right here where the V5 system, it's, it's not, it's kind of straight across up here and much longer. And the V6 system, it's much easier to grab the filters to take them out or to adjust them, especially when you have multiple filters in place here. So just that subtle change in the design, just angling them down right here, definitely made it a lot easier to uh, maneuver the filters around. So that was definitely a very nice touch. Now, when it comes to filters, something that you always want to look out for is a color cast. And it's something that uh, originally drew me to Nissi a couple years ago, as I always heard people talk about that they were the most color neutral filters on the market. And what I mean by color cast or color neutral is a lot of filters out there. When you use them, it'll add kind of like a cool color cast to your images. It'll introduce subtle blue tones or subtle magenta tones to your photo or maybe warm tones to your image. And it's very subtle. And a lot of times it's hard to see this unless you compare kind of a with the filter versus a without the filter. That's when you can kind of see subtle color casts. And color casts are rather difficult to, uh, to fix in, in post-processing. So, but that's what I love about the Nissi filters is there's really no color cast. It's very color neutral. And that's, that's a very good thing. It'll save you a lot of time in post-processing trying to correct that. Now, as far as the giveaway goes, well, this is it. It's the entire V6 uh, filter system. Well, it's not this one. It'll be a brand new one. You don't want this one. It's covered in sea salt and sand and, and muck. But um, it'll be the, the full setup, which is the, um, the V6 filter holder, the 82 millimeter adapter ring with the wheels to spin the, uh, the circular polarizer, the landscape circular polarizer, this nice Nissi lens cap, all three of the adapter rings so it will pretty much fit any lens that you happen to have this very nice nissi um, filter pouch that holds this entire kit and here is the box that it all comes in so if you are interested in this in order to enter the giveaway just um, of course subscribe to the channel like the video and leave me a comment and it doesn't have to be a comment of why you want the filter system or anything about filters just leave me a comment that has anything to do with you and photography just to start a conversation anything about you know how you got into photography how long have you been in photography what do you like to shoot what gear do you use anything and then in two weeks i'll pick a comment from the comments below and go ahead and send this entire uh, v6 filter system kit out to you 
So uh, I hope you enjoyed this week's video. We're able to get some kind of helpful information that you can apply to your long exposure photography moving forward. As always, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you are not subscribed already. And as always, I really, really do appreciate you watching this week's video. And I'll see you next week.